In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to draw this landscape scene using Adobe Illustrator. Now I'm going to split this tutorial up into a few different videos just to keep things simple in nice small chunks. In the first one, I'm going to show you how to draw the mountain ranges. Um, in the second one, I'll probably show you how to do the sky. And in the third one, I'll show you how to do the foreground objects, which are the trees and the grass. All right, so let's get started on creating this artwork now by making ourselves a new document. From the web templates, I'm just going to choose the minimum size of 1024 by 768 pixels. Once you've got your artboard up, the first thing we want to do is find a photo of a mountain range that we can trace. Okay, so I've gone onto Google Images and found this image from Nepal, I believe. And it's got the mountain, or well, plenty of mountain ranges, as you can see there in different layers. Um, that we can easily trace into Illustrator. So we need to um, either drag this into Illustrator or go on up to File and place it in, whatever method you prefer. I'm just going to drag it across and drop it into place. And just put it somewhere um, in the center of your page. I'm actually, I might even put it right at the bottom because that's where my mountain range is going to be. Now, in my Layers panel, I'm just going to lock that layer. I might even give it a name, call it Photo. And to trace this, what you need to do is use the pen tool. Okay, now the pen tool can be a little bit fiddly uh, for those of you who haven't used it before, but we're going to keep it fairly simple today. We're not going to get real fancy with the pen tool. It's more like an introduction to how to use the pen tool to trace. Okay, so with the pen tool selected from your toolbox here on the left hand side, I want you to turn your fill color off and go and select a really bright stroke color. Doesn't matter what color, but I'm going to go for a bright pink. And I'm going to turn the um, size up to about three points so I can see it fairly clearly. I'm then just going to hold Alt and scroll on my mouse to zoom in a little bit. And starting from this left hand edge of the page, I'm just going to click where that mountain range starts. Okay, that back one I'm drawing first, sorry, that's the white one with all the snow caps. This is the one I'm going to be drawing first. Okay, so when you click once, you'll notice that as you move your mouse around, a blue line is following your cursor wherever you go. Okay, that's the pen tool for you. Now what we need to do is simply just go around and click, 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 click all around um, the basically the ridge line of that mountain. So watch what I do here. I'm just going to go click, click, click. You can be uh, pretty fussy here if you want to get all those little jagged edges, but you don't have to. Okay, it's not really going to matter that much. You can skip a few here and there. Okay, so I'm just clicking, click, click each time I see it bit of movement in that ridge line and you're just tracing that mountain basically now when you get to the corner of the screen like this you need to move across further so what you do is you hold spacebar down and the hand tool will appear and you can just slide your screen across and you can have a go at um, drawing the next section okay now there are some curves and if you are familiar with the pen tool by all means try and draw some of those curves but if you're not just click your way around them Okay, it's not the end of the world if you don't get all those smooth curves. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just going to click around most of these. Now I'm going to speed things up here just so you can, um, oh, we don't have to sit around and watch me finish this off. But when I get to the end of the mountain, over the other side of the screen, I'll get back to you and show you what to do next. All right, so I'm at the end of the page now. Okay, so I've gone across that ridge line. The next thing I need to do is simply go straight down the page to the bottom corner and click right in that corner. Okay, and I'm going to go across to the left hand corner, click in that. You can hold shift if you want to keep these lines straight and then go back and click where you began. And that will now enclose the shape and you have just drawn that first mountain range. Now if I just switch the um, stroke color and the fill color around, you can see that is our mountain range. Okay, so that ridge line, I reckon that looks pretty good. Okay, what I'm going to do now is, um, actually I might bump that stroke up. For some reason it's gone back to one point, so I'll just turn it back up to three points so I can see it clearly. And I'm going to lock that path into place. I'll give that a name, I'll call it Mountain 1. And now I just repeat the process for the other ridge lines in this artwork. Okay, so I will grab my pen tool, I'll change the stroke color now to maybe a bright green just so I can see the difference between the um, mountains. And I'm going to draw the next one along. Okay, so maybe this one in this section just here. Okay, same process as before. I'm just going to start on the edge of the page 
and then start clicking my way along that ridge line okay don't have to be perfect as I said before you don't have to do a little curves if you don't want to uh, it's up to you okay so I'm going to fast forward the video now I'm going to do all the different um, mountain ranges I guess or the mountains you can see in this picture and I'll get back to you at the very end Alright, so there you have it. I have drawn um, all of the mountain ranges now, or mountains, I guess you could say. So as you can see in my layers panel, I've renamed each of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and I've locked them into place. Okay, what we're going to do now is start to color them in. Uh, so if I just hide that photo in the background there, okay, you can see how it's looking. It looks a bit like a line graph, if anything. Now, one thing you need to be aware of when you're uh, drawing mountain ranges like this in Illustrator, it is good practice to have the mountains that are closer to you, so for example the one down the bottom here, a darker color. And as you work your way back to this one in the background, then the colors will become lighter. Okay, so the lightest mountain color will be the one in the back, and you'll progressively get darker as you move towards the front of the shot. Okay, and that will provide a bit of depth to our image. Okay, so starting with the back mountain, uh, I'm going to unlock mountain one, which is our pink colored mountain. And I'm going to color it in with a gradient. Okay, so what I might do is select it first of all. And I'll go to the gradient panel here. If you can't see that, just go to your um, window menu and select gradient. Now I'm going to choose the first one here, which is a linear gradient. Okay, and that just basically fades one color into another. That's what a gradient is, and it happens in a horizontal manner. If you want to flip that around to a vertical manner, which is what I want to happen, hit this little drop-down box here and change it to 90 degrees. So now I've got the darker color at the top, a lighter color at the bottom, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to choose my colors. So the darker color at the top is still going to be a pretty light color. So double-click on this little black circle over here in your gradient panel and choose yourself a light blue. Uh, so I'm going to base my colors maybe around this light blue. Oh, actually a bit fluoro that one. I might go this one below it. Okay, now I can go to my um, sliders and just make this a little bit lighter. Because we don't want this very dark at all, this one. Okay, something like that um, looks all right. Now I want it to fade into a light color. So um, again, I'm going to choose that blue we just chose and go to my sliders and make it a lot lighter. It'll almost be white, this one that we're doing. Um, so I'm going to slide these right along and we'll have it looking something like that for now. All right, you can go back to your properties now and turn that stroke off. We don't need it. And that is your first mountain range colored. Now we're going to adjust these gradients a little bit later on once we've got the rest of the mountain mountains all done. Uh, but we're going to go into the second mountain now and color it in a little bit darker. Okay, so go to mountain number two and unlock it. Go to your gradient panel and once you select this second mountain, click the linear gradient again. Okay, it puts on that bluey kind of um, color that we just used a moment ago, so that's going to help us out in a sec. We'll change the angle first to 90 degrees. And this blue color that we're going to be fading into, we want it to be a little bit darker. Okay, so just a little bit darker like so. Not too dark, but because uh, we've still got another three mountains to go, so I don't want to go too crazy. And we're going to fade into just a slightly darker blue. Not too much, just a little bit like so. That's our next one done. Go to your properties and turn that stroke off. And you can lock that layer back up and get mountain three now. Unlock it, go and click on it. It's the yellow one for me. Over to the gradients and put a linear gradient onto it. Okay, we're gonna change the angle of that gradient to 90 degrees. And we're gonna just make this blue up the end here by double clicking on it a little bit darker again. So as you can see, as we Move further towards uh, the viewer, we are getting bluer and bluer, and I guess darker, I suppose. 
I'll just make that fading color a little bit darker too. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Back to my properties now, and I'll turn that stroke off. And I can lock that into position. Up to mountain four now, so I've only got two to go. So this is the orange one now. Um, go back to the gradient, put the linear gradient onto it. Switch the angle to 90 degrees, and go and make that a little bit darker again. All right, that's looking pretty sweet. Again, we'll go to the properties and turn that stroke off. And lock that back up and just open up Mountain 5 now, which is the purple one for me. And I will just go put the final linear gradient into it, make it a bit darker. Oops, I forgot to change the angle to the 90 degrees there, like so. And the color it's fading into, make that a bit darker too. Um, we could go a bit darker on this end. It's quite similar to the one I just did above it. Not too bad. Okay. I'll just go to my properties and turn that stroke off, and we'll have all our gradients done then. Okay, so let's hide this photo in the background now. We can actually probably delete it. So this um, bottom layer, which is just the photo of um, Nepal, just hit the trash can. It's gone. Okay, so we've now got our mountain range in on the page. Now to make this look a little bit better, I'm going to adjust some of these gradients. Okay, now just near each ridge line, it looks best if you have a bit of a white glow. I guess it kind of makes a misty kind of look around the mountains. So I'm going to just unlock all these layers and I'm going to start with the back mountain. If I go back to my um, gradient panel, let's see if we can just adjust this little gradient slider. Just brings, if we bring that to the right, it brings the white up a little bit as you can see there. Now that's probably a bit too far, so I'm just going to pull it back to the left. Something like that's not too bad. It's just got that white glow along the ridge line of the next mountain, which kind of makes it look like a misty effect. If we go and click on this mountain here, we'll do the same. Just bump this gradient slider up to the right a little bit so we get a bit of a white glow around the base of that mountain. That's not too bad. The other ones have already got those white glows there. If you want, you can go in and adjust them slightly, but I don't think you need to do too much to them. Okay, so no, I might leave those bottom two because I think they're okay. If anything, this front one, I could probably move it to the left of that gradient slider just to bring the darkness down a bit. Um, even maybe for this one too, a little. All right, so just play around with those gradient sliders until you are happy with how they look. All right, so that's basically the mountain range done. The final thing I want to do now is put in a sky, just to make it look a little bit more realistic. So to do the sky, uh, make sure you've locked all these mountain layers back up, and grab your rectangle tool from your toolbox. Uh, it doesn't matter what color you're choosing here, I'm just going to choose black to start with, just so we can see it. And I'm going to hover right in that corner in the top left and drag it all the way across the page to the bottom right corner. I'm then going to rename that layer from Rectangle to Sky. And I'm going to move that to the very bottom of my Layers panel, so the sky is beneath the mountains. So now you can see this black sky here in the background. And I'm going to go back to my gradients and put a linear gradient on it. Again, I'll change the um, angle to 90 degrees. And we don't want a bluey color this time because we've used the blue in the mountains. So I'm going to go for a color that reminds me of like a, a dusky, sunsetty kind of color. So Light pinks and purples will probably look best here. Now I've got that mixed up. I should have the pink down one end and purple down the other. So I'm going to have the darker color on top again. Okay, so you can start to see this coming together now. Um, that doesn't look too bad actually. I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'll just adjust it with my slide a little bit to get a bit more pink into that. Um, sky, not too much though, I still want a bit of purple, that doesn't look too bad I don't think. Um, yeah, it's probably not too much else I'd do to that. If anything I'm just not overly happy with this back um, mountain, it's just a little bit too light in colour. So I'm just going to adjust that light blue a little bit more to see if I can get it blending a bit better. 
That's not too bad. You need a bit more blue, if anything, rather than a little bit green. Anyway, it's not a huge difference, but you get the idea. Okay, so I might stop the video here. That's as far as I'm going to go. We've got our mountain range done now, and we've got the sky drawn in. Make sure you've locked all of those layers and saved up. And in the next video, we'll come back and we'll look at adding some elements into the night sky up here. So we're going to get a big moon, some stars, maybe even a few little wispy clouds and might even throw a bird flying across the sky as well. Okay, so I will catch you in that next video tutorial.